Hi everyone. So I just wanted to give a little brief video. I'm sorry you have to stir up my face because I don't have any slides here. A little brief video about um, how to prepare and study for and develop your knowledge in this class. I know I mentioned it at the beginning of the semester, but it's been a while and I just figured this would be a really good refresher for how you should engage in the material in the class. Um, we have a little bit less than half of the semester left. And so I just wanna make sure that everybody continues to be successful. Based on some student feedback though, it does seem like you all could use a refresher or even some guidance as to how to engage with the material in a way that makes sense. So first I want to explain that when you are taking a class like this, one that requires that you apply your knowledge, which I you know, shared at the beginning of the class, uh, you would have to do, you basically have to create a house. You have to start with a good foundation, then you have to build the frame, and then you have to complete the house by putting things on that frame, like walls, a roof, siding, windows, etc. So there are basically three parts to how you engage in the material in this class. Um, and all of them build off of each other. You can't just make a house. You have to build upon the structures that you have there. You can't put a roof on something until you have a foundation and a frame. Without the foundation and the frame, the roof just falls through. So this class is no different. So your foundation in this class should consist of reading the textbook and listening and watching the lecture videos, right? That should be the first thing you do every week, be it Saturday or Sunday or Monday or even Tuesday, you should do that. You can start by the, doing the reading or start with the lecture, but that should precede what comes Thursday, which is the activity. Before I get to the activity though, I do want to emphasize that when you are reading and when you are listening to or watching the lecture, write your notes by hand, be it with a stylus on a tablet or pen and paper, write your notes by hand. Research shows that when we type, when you're just listening to someone and you're typing away and you're not, um, you're just typing what they say, your brain is not processing that information. It goes into your working memory and it probably doesn't make it into your short-term memory and therefore it doesn't make it into your long-term memory. Basically, by virtue of you not engaging with the material actively, which is drawing from some of the stuff we talked about in training and development, by virtue of you not engaging with it actively, your brain basically a, doesn't develop the synapses, the connections, and the structure cognitively to integrate and retain and keep that information, but your brain also concludes, this is not important, I'm not going to keep it, and just gets rid of it. This is a very oversimplification of how learning takes place for the record, but for the purposes of this conversation, that's what I'm going to rely on. So if you want your brain to remember the information so you can apply it later, you have to engage with the material. This gets to that active learning thing we talked about in um, training and development. One way to do active learning when you are watching a lecture or reading a book is you take notes on your own that are in your own words. You create your own outline and your own structure. Heck, even writing a few paragraphs after you've read something or listened to the lecture about what you took away from it in your own words, not relying on anything other than your memory, that will help reinforce your learning and knowledge of the material. Because like I said, to do well in this class, you need to build a house, but the first thing you need to do before you build a house, before you put a roof on it, before you put windows and a door is you need a foundation. Your foundation is reading, and the lecture. You can do it in any order, but you should do it first you know, on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The point is it should come before the activity on Thursday. The activity on Thursday is meant to reinforce and start that process of application of your knowledge. So in that way, the activity is almost like the framework of a home. So the activity takes what you've built in the foundation and builds upon it. So I'm asking you in the activity to extend your knowledge, to apply it. IO psychology is also known in our field as applied psychology because that's what we do. We take psychological principles and we apply them to the workplace. So that's what I'm asking you to do. As I said at the beginning of the semester, I am going to ask you to apply your knowledge in the workplace or to organizational contexts. Without doing the lecture or without engaging with the lecture, without engaging even in the reading, 
you will not do well in the activities. You may scrape by if all you're doing is looking in your textbook as you see my questions or going to the lecture slides and seeing if you can get something from them or even going online, which I'll return to in a second. But even just going online and trying to get help from another source that's a little bit more easily navigable than either of those, you haven't developed the foundation. So you're basically trying to build the frame of a house on no foundation, which I don't know if any of you are in construction or have ever done Habitat for Humanity or something like that, but you can't do that. It'll just fall apart. It gets even harder when you try to build a roof on top of it, when you try to actually build the things on top of the frame when you have no foundation. And moreover, your foundation's, your, your frame's gonna be super weak. It's like you have built your frame with rotting wood. And so when you go into the activity with no foundation and no foundation of engaging with the textbook or the lecture, you're basically now trying to build a house with rotting wood. It might be enough to support some things, but eventually that whole thing is going to come tumbling down. So in that way, doing the activities by just, you know, the seat of your pants, you know, looking for something in the book really quickly so you can answer a question and hopefully get enough points to pass by, that's eventually going to come and get you. Next, because next we get to the quizzes. The quizzes are the final touch, the thing that really solidifies that you know what you're talking about. Because I ask you in the quizzes to, to basically put it all together, to do those finishing touches, to show me that you've built your foundation, you've started to build the, build the frame of your house, and now you're going to take it on home and show that you can even extend it beyond what was in the textbook, beyond what was in the activity. And if you have not been doing things in that order, it's really hard to do the quiz. Now, like I said, I'm well aware that some of you are going through this by probably just looking up things online and hoping that that will be sufficient. It's the middle of a pandemic. I can't stop you from doing that. But what that means is eventually it will catch up with you. When it comes to grading the assignment in particular, I'm going to be looking for a lot. And I'm going to be looking for a profound level of knowledge in this class. And so when you get to things also like the quiz, I look for that too. So if you're relying on things on the internet, if you're relying on just going through the textbook in the middle of your quiz and never actually cracking it open until then, same with the lecture video. If the first time you're watching the lecture video is during the quiz, you have not developed the knowledge to support that activity. You've not developed the knowledge to support answering your questions correctly. It is equivalent going through the quiz and popping and you know, cracking open your book or clicking play for the first time in the middle of the quiz on a lecture video is like trying to put the roof on a house with uh, that has no foundation and has a frame made of rotting wood, if that at all. And so, in that way, you wouldn't be able to build a house and it will all come crumbling down. Maybe it'll stand up for a little bit, but eventually it all falls apart. And so my point here is not to shame anybody for not engaging in that. Like I said, it's the middle of pandemic. Rather, it's to arm you with better skills, better abilities to move forward, to do better for the rest of the semester. Another note that I'll make before I sign off here is that don't go to the internet. I, I, I don't know who's writing this stuff online about IO psychology and organizational behavior, but they aren't people like me and they aren't me. And so the thing is, I can tell when someone's pulling something from the internet because usually it's like four fifths correct. And it's that one fifth that tells me that someone's not looking in the book, not listening to my lecture videos. And I don't know who's writing the Wikipedia articles for the context or the content that we talk about in this class or who's writing the course hero notes that I come across when, I'm, when I've come across a suspicious answer and I type it into the Google machine and try to see where it's coming from. But they're wrong. And so if your tactic has been, okay, in the middle of the quiz, I'm not going to even touch the textbook or the lecture slides or in the middle of the activity, I'm not going to crack them open, nor have I ever opened them. I'm just going to rely on what I can find on Google. It's going to come back and get you because what's out there, it's not good. It's really not. Um, and you know where it is good? Here and in my lecture videos. So though it may seem like it's far easier 
and expedient to go through, to just do it like that, never crack open the textbook, never watch the videos and just try to look up answers online and hope that that does you enough good. Eventually that house comes crumbling down. Eventually that comes back and bites you in the butt metaphorically. And I don't want any of my students to fail, but with the assignment coming up on the horizon, if that's been your tactic, it will come back to get you because the level of knowledge required, the foundation required to do well on the assignment, you can't build in two weeks. And you can't build by going to sources that aren't used in this class. It's like building a house out of cheap vinyl siding and spray on stucco. You want to build it with the real stuff. And if you're just pulling cheap materials from the internet, it's all going to fall apart. So this is not meant to scare or shame anybody, but to give you a path and the tools to do better moving forward, because there will be another assignment after this one. There will be more quizzes and more activities. So do your best, but keep trying to do your best. Just because you've been doing it this way or you haven't been practicing the best study habits doesn't mean that you can't change now. There's always time to improve. There's always room for improvement. And if ever you need any help identifying how your study habits can be better, just email me. I'm a psychologist. I'm trained in this and how to teach you how to do better. I'm also an instructor. I'm also a teacher. I've been a teacher for many years. This is what we know. So if ever you need any help, just feel free to reach out to me. And that's it. Once again, sorry that you had to stare at my face, but I have no slides for this. I just wanted to make a pitch about how to do better in my class.